joining us tonight with some there he is. A very serious issue oh. is Akila Willery, a cyberbullying and internet safety expert with the Albion School District, <laughs> and Dr. Tom Merriman with the Phaedrus Group Responsive Solution for Kids. So thank you both for joining us. What did you think about what those kids had to say in Sally's piece? Uh, probably your best source is always going to be what's coming from the kids, what they're experiencing every day, some of the fears that they have about what they're encountering. What are the fears uh, in there? One of the best things that I heard the kids say is that the difference is between what girls are experiencing and what the boys are experiencing is that the boys, what they're seeing is it's going to be much more physical, much more overt. What the girls are experiencing, it's going to be rumors. It's going to be things that are a little more vicious, things that are a little more behind the scenes. Uh, girls tend to not want to be confrontational face to face, but they will do things like spreading rumors, telling secrets behind your back, and also with cyberbullying, girls tend to be the biggest perpetrators when it comes to online aggression. Now, Dr. Marion, you see a lot of students in your practice. Have you been pretty busy so far this school year? We've been busy this fall, yes. So tell me what the types of problems are that you're experiencing, what you're hearing from the kids who come to see you. Well, I heard Morgan say that she was being bullied in a way that's very familiar. She said that she was getting texts from kids that said, we're busy, we're having fun, we're having a great time, and you're not a part of it. And that's the kind of bullying that I see a lot with uh, the children in my group. Uh, the thing is that if Morgan had a small group of friends that she was busy with on those same weekends, that would amount to her to just uh, static. She wouldn't care about that. That kind of bullying wouldn't matter to her. And that's, uh, that's the goal of our group, is to have those kids make connections. Okay, Dr. Merriman, what I think you're getting at, because we talked about this earlier, and Akilah, feel free to weigh in. You say that we pay a lot of attention to the actual bullies, a little bit to the bystanders, mm -hmm. but we don't focus enough on the targets of bullying. And you say parents can help out with that. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I agree with Akilah. She and I spoke earlier that the... Uh, that the uh, bystanders are a powerful um, element and that we could both uh, do a lot with them. But ultimately, yes, parents can bully-proof their kids, and that's where the uh, time and energy ought to be spent. Uh, parents can bully-proof their kids in two ways. They can uh, share with their kids the ways that they exclude themselves from the group, the ways that they identify themselves as potential targets for bullies. And they can also, and this is more important, I think, they can share with their kids how to make real friendships, how to build real friendships. And one of the ways that we share with kids how to do that is to, when they're in a companionship situation, to make a point of making the other kid feel good about himself or herself rather than focus on making the other kid feel good about you. Okay, we're going to get back to some of those suggestions in a second, but Akila, as I'm listening to the suggestions by Dr. Mer Merriman, you see the folks who are kind of hiding behind their computer screens. How does this all weigh out? How can you help students uh, make sure that they're not the targets online? Well, one big point that I want to make about cyberbullying, number one is that girls, middle school age, just like you saw in the segment, tend to be the largest group of aggressors as far as cyberbullying is concerned. Uh, and a lot of that goes back to just, as Dr. Merriman was uh, just explaining, it goes back to good old-fashioned friendships. Girls have very, very close emotional ties to their best friends, their best girlfriends. Even as adult women, sometimes we share more secrets with our girlfriends than we do with our own spouses. And uh, sometimes when those friendships go sour, when those relationships break up, those tend to be the aggressors when it comes to cyberbullying because that is the person that you've shared your innermost secrets with, someone who knows your vulnerabilities. And if someone wants to get back at you, someone that wants to get revenge over whatever the falling out was over, to post that online, posting things that are very private online, that is sometimes the ultimate revenge for cyberbullies. Now, one thing that we can try to teach our girls, number one, is to try to keep some things a little more private, maybe not to share quite as much. And just as Dr. Merriman said, you can sometimes bully-proof your child online just by teaching them not to share too much information with the public because once it goes online, you can never take it back. And Dr. Mary, we just want to stress it's not just the girls who are the targets. Boys are targets too. Final word for parents tonight who want some help. Well, parents need to sit down with their children and tell them that there Copy are important it. ways to make friendships. They need to focus on friendships as well as they focus on uh, homework. As much as they focus on sports, they need to focus on social relationships, peer-to-peer -peer relationships. And the parents know more about that. They've been through junior high, and they know how to work that out. So that's something that parents need to do. All right. Dr. Merriman, Akilah Willery, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. The report is out. Now the finger-pointing begins.